In addition to the tools mentioned in the basic installation training section, you will need the following equipment to speed the process up. Rebar bender and cutter to pre-bend and cut all rebar. Sliding miter saw to pre-cut all corner and angle panels. Foam rasp to smooth cut edges. Laser level to check elevations. In order to speed up the process of corner construction, corner panels should be cut off site or in a central location on site. Angles of any degree can easily be constructed and braced through use of the quad locks angle bracket. First calculate the bisection of the angle. For instance, a 45 degree angle has a bisection of 22 and a half degrees. Set your saw to the bisection angle and cut two panels in mirror fashion that will total the desired angle. The key to making the angle bracket fit is to always cut through the center of the knob when cutting the bisection. Use angle brackets on the outside panels only. As with T-walls and 90 degree corners, build angles first and work to the common point in the wall. Where perpendicular walls meet, they form a T-wall intersection. As with 90 degree corners, T-walls should be constructed first. Use a full four foot panel to form the back of the T-wall. Avoid placing the joint in line with the T where higher concrete pressures exist. Align the joint with the outside of the T-wall leg. Place two panels for the leg of the T so intersecting panels will butt into them. Set the inside panels so as to maintain the normal layout with the outer panels, keeping the ends aligned. Place the smaller inside corner bracket over the two 90 degree corners. To secure the outside walls, place two large outside corner brackets as shown, so the brackets overlap in opposite directions along the outside row of panels. When secured with ties, these brackets will connect the outside of the T-wall to the leg of the T-wall and eliminate the need for external bracing. Place a full tie on either side of the T-leg as close to the T-leg as possible. Cut tie flanges and place between full ties at the center of the T. Place a full tie in the corner bracket at the top of the T-leg. Repeat this pattern on every row of the T-wall. Second row panels should follow the normal two foot offset with the middle of the panels falling on the joints of the panels below. Cut the last panel to allow for the T intersection. Start the T leg second row with two foot panels. Repeat the bracket and the tie pattern from the first row. Break. Brace the back side of the T with conventional bracing. Walls with radiuses as tight as four feet can be achieved by making saw cuts on the compression side of the panel. A sliding saw with a cut depth control is most effective. Flex track is used on the bottom of the first course of panels to hold the curve in the wall. 
First, lay a continuous inside and outside toe plate using the flex track. Next, cut vertical grooves into the foam with a circular saw on the compression side of the panel. Experiment a little to determine the correct depth and number of cuts for the desired radius. Consult the product manual for detailed instructions. Assemble the panels and ties every 8 inches or less to form the required radius. Spray foam each horizontal panel seam to make the radius rigid and to reduce bracing requirements. Offset the panel on each course the same as straight walls. When you reach the required height, you'll have to brace the radius more frequently than straight walls. Consult the Quadlock technical representative for details on cut depth, spacing and bracing requirements. Commercial contractors prefer Quadlock because of its ability to form construction elements like columns, pilasters and lentils, which may contain large amounts of reinforcing bark. These complex elements prevent the placement of other preformed style ICF products. By combining regular ties, extender ties, and metal corner brackets, enclosures for columns and pilasters can be easily formed, even with rebar cages already placed. Determine the called out size of the column and select the regular tie that when attached to the 12 inch extender tie will form the appropriate cavity size measured perpendicular to the original wall. These ties are best cut into single ties before assembly and placement. Cut panels to form the column dimensions, making sure that the sides lap over the outside panels, as shown, and lap inside the wall panels. Place inside and outside corner brackets so that the entire top dimension of the column is covered by metal brackets. Place combination ties across the dimension that is perpendicular to the wall, threading the individual tie through rebar. Insert flanges into every other slot on the outside panel. Be sure that there are flanges as close to the corners as possible. Because accepted standards for concrete placement discourage excessive fall of concrete during the pour, tall walls should be constructed in maximum 10-foot increments. Check with a project engineer for specifications on placement of cold joints. Most commercial grade wall bracing systems have brackets available that will allow the extension of the vertical bracing member for the first 10 foot section. Leave the first level bracing in place and extend upwards into your next pour with the extension bracket. Extra long lateral turnbuckle braces are also available to allow fine adjustments on taller walls. Ask your supplier about scaffolding attachments that may be available.